Hello and welcome everyone, it's Karen. I am so excited to share this video with you because I really like this card design. I, after I did my last video on making pop-up box cards, I was thinking, why can't it be the whole card? Why is it just a little thing? So I've kind of come up with a design on my own that's this card here, and I just really wanted to share it because I think it's really fun. So here is my little cheat sheet for myself. It is a, it's a full box card. It's four and three quarter inches wide when it's done by two and a quarter inches deep by five inches tall. If you want, I would say just take a screenshot of that um, or pause and write the measurements down, but that would be the easiest. I am going to make that first card I just showed you. So I've cut the front. It's 10 and a quarter inches wide by five inches tall. And that is the back piece that's four and three quarters by five inches. And before I do anything else, I'm going to do some ink blending, pretty messy ink blending, but it kind of doesn't matter in the end. Um, the back, I put a little darker blue on. I want that to be the ocean. And I have a piece of alcohol ink laminated um, acetate there. So on the back here, you can see I've colored in, those are going to be the sides of the box. And I just thought I wanted that depth on this one. I didn't on the next card. So you can decide if you want to color the inside or not. But I am creasing at a half an inch in from each end. And then the side is two and a quarter inches. And then the front, if I go to a whole number, is four and three quarter inches wide. So that's all I'm doing there. Um, and then all that's left now is that half inch at the end. And those are the creases. Now, before I bend these creases, I am going to die cut that center. And I used a circle, but you can use whatever you want, whatever shape dies you want to use. And now all of these folds will be a mountain fold. So I'm just folding and creasing these now. And I tend to go both directions. I don't know if that helps or not, but it's, I don't know, it makes me happy to think that I'm not tearing my paper. So there's that box shape that you want. And that is the back piece that will fit in there. And you can see why I did the sides. They, you can sort of see them a bit. Now I've trimmed down that piece of acetate and I've put some double-sided tape around three, three edges. I've left the top open. Um, and I have a reason for that, you'll see. But I am putting some double-sided tape now on these tabs, on the inside of them. And to put the back on, I'm going to remove the release paper on this right-hand side one. And I just put the back right up against it. I butt it right up against that fold line, make sure the top and the bottom are lined up. And then I fold the tab over onto the, the back piece. And that should have it go in exactly the right spot. Now here I am making some cross pieces uh, and I just find these easier to do as one whole piece. So this is a five and a quarter inch wide piece of cardstock. I've ink blended that with the tea dye ink for the sand and I'm creasing now a quarter of an inch in on both ends. And these uh, will fold underneath as well in a mountain fold. And I'm going to put some double sided tape on these. Now you could use a die to make you know, little hilly parts, but I just chose to cut these uh, with my scissors. I could have used bigger scissors, but I didn't. Um, and I did put a little Copic marker dots on that sand just to give it a bit of interest. So there you have it. You get two layers for the price of one. Uh, and now here's why I didn't uh, use any tape on that acetate. I'm tucking these images into the water there. Uh, and just there, I've glued them down, just sticking them down. And now to glue that acetate down, I just run a little bead of glue uh, along the bottom of those images. And this glue will dry clear, so you don't notice it once it's all dry. Okay, so for that first layer, you want to decide where to put it. Um, I moved it a little bit away from that crease that you can see there, so there's some depth to that. Uh, and then the second crease, I just staggered it a little further. You could add lots of layers to this. It's quite wide. That 
two and a quarter inches, you can put quite a few rows of of whatever you're making if it's hills or sand dunes or snow banks whatever it is you're going to do you can add quite a bit of depth um, and it's so fun I actually have done a few of these for some of my design team work and I can't show them to you I would love to but the products haven't been released so I will post them as I as I can but oh I've had a load of fun making these so here I'm just making sure those tabs are, are lined up along the bottom edge and I'm folding right up making sure it's all flat at the bottom and then just press those tabs into that side wall. And that's going to be the box shape right there. Now on this one I've left this in to show you because when I went to fold this tab over it wouldn't fold. It's a little bit too wide and so what I did is I ended up trimming off just the tiniest bit off that back piece so that it would fit inside that tab. So here you can see I'm just trimming hardly anything off. That's what I took off. But it was enough that now when I fold that tab over it would it would fold down. So I'm just going to remove the release paper on this side eventually. <laughs> And then uh, fold the tab right over. So just making sure it's all lined up top and bottom again. And there you have it. And I really bend these back and forth and crease them. They just seem to need it. And now the fun part comes and you get to decorate them. So I've colored up all my images, of course, and I've stuck them down now inside the card. And this is the left side edge. I'm just sticking this little ice cream truck down. He barely fits, but he's on there. And then on the other right-hand edge or side, I've stuck the little beach hut just to carry on that theme from the inside of the card. Now I've added a few clouds and that's the sentiment I chose. It's from Creative Expressions. It was a new one that came out in February, but I just liked it with that little scene. So there's the extra clouds. I do add a few more afterwards on the top right corner. But for the back of this one now, I there are two ways to do the back. I always have ink on the back of mine. But for this one, I chose to do, or for this card, I do another card later, with slightly differently on the back. I've cut a piece of cardstock that's 10 inches long by 4 and 3 quarter inches wide and creased it at 5 inches. So now I'm making sure the fold is at the top there and I'm just going to stick that to the back of my card so it gives you a place to write your message. So you can see all the depth there now in that. It's so fun. You could decorate the sides. You can have little characters coming off on acetate tabs from the sides. Just lots of ideas. Okay, here's the second card. So if you don't want to color a lot of images or do a lot of ink blending, this is a paper from Craft Consortium. It's the In the Forest collection. And I'm using both the front and the back of that, actually. And I use the decoupage papers for this one. So normally these papers, you put foam tape and you build them up and they make great cards also because there's so much dimension there. But I didn't want the dimension for this card. So in that set are all these extras and there are all these images. So I took some of them out and that's what I used for my, my images inside this box. Now I've cut from 80 pound cardstock um, a card front as well and I will glue this uh, pattern paper to it. I've also cut a back and I did a little bit of ink blending and I from the back of that tree paper I was able to cut that little piece out that will fit on the back of this. So I had to trim the, uh, the mountains off like the top of them but it works out. So I am now gluing the pattern paper to my card base that 80 pound card base, and then I will crease it as well. So at a half an inch in on the sides, and then two and a quarter inches for the, the side box, side of the box. 
and the front is four and three quarter inches. And again, before I crease that at all, or bend it and crease it and score it, I will die cut that center. And again, I used a circle for this one. Okay, you're gonna see me struggle a little bit here, but I thought this was um, good. Whenever you glue paper down, it really, it's hard to bend it and crease it. So I'm, I'm struggling here with it. I've sprayed it with a bit of water and I'm trying to soften the fibers and I'm really trying to bow the, the paper instead of doing a point right away, just so it can stretch a little. I'm going back and forth, and I don't, don't know if that helps or not, but it makes me feel better. So I finally get this one. It does tear a tiny bit there. Um, and then at the end here, same thing. I'm getting it wet. And I'm just going back and forth with this one just to try to soften everything up a bit and get it going. Now, I do have a little bit of a fix for you um, because you'll see this part here does tear. And I, I think it's a fix, a little bit of a fix. <laughs> we'll see. So what I did is I took my glue. And my glue, it's from Cosmic Shimmer. It dries clear and it's not tacky. So I think any glue that does that would work. But it seemed to help to just, um, I just used my finger and rubbed it in. But it seemed to keep the fibers down. And so I don't even notice it when I look at the card, to be honest now. So here, I did not color up the inside, if you notice. I've left it. So you don't have to do the inside. It's up to you. Uh, but I'm butting this back piece up, right up again, against that, that fold line, making sure it's even top and bottom, and then just fold the tab over. And I've cut a few cross pieces here. I decided for this one I would add a few more just to show you there's a bit more depth that you can get out of these cards. Well, I think there is. And so once again, I'm just going to line these up along the bottom edge. And when I've got it where I want it to go, I'll just press that little tab down. I've taken the release paper off that. And I just stagger these across. You can put them closer or further away, just whatever you want, um, however you want it to look. So here I'm putting the cloud uh, cross piece in and I decided to move it, to drop it down a little bit from the top edge, just so it would show a little bit more. So you can see it there. And now I do have it, I'm lining it up so, so it's, parallel to that top edge and I've got all the tabs folded out flat. I've taken the release paper off and I am just making sure that the bottoms and the top on the cloud one are all as straight as can be. And you do need three hands for this, but do your best. I'm just making sure everything's tucked in and as straight as I can and fold it down and just press those cross pieces in. And hopefully they'll end up where they're meant to be. So there you have all the cross pieces lined up. Lots of room to add things to it. And on this one, uh, when I went to fold that tab over, it fits, so I didn't have to trim anything on this. So I just took the release paper off this one and folded the flap over, making sure the tops and bottoms were all nicely lined up. And then once again, folding it back and forth just to really help it move in the direction it's meant to go. And then you can decorate it. And just when you're adding in your, your images, just make sure you're not putting glue up above the, the line of the cross piece because you don't want to glue the whole box down. So I was just a little careful of that. Um, and there it is. It's quite a masculine looking card, I think. Okay, so I have this sentiment, but it just blended in. And so I thought if I put it up on some vellum, that would be better. But this particular die, uh, which is from Creative Expressions, uh, does not have an outline die that goes with it. So this is what I do. I just trace around the die itself and then fussy cut that out. 
And then you have a pretty close to perfect uh, vellum um, outline. Okay, on this back piece, I have just cut a piece of cardstock that was four and three quarter inches wide by five inches tall and glued that to the back as a place to write a message. So th there is no flap on the back of this one, but it works and it's whatever you would prefer, I think. So there you have that card, um, and here they both are together side by side. Lots of depth to these, just and so many stamps and dies would work with this, I think. So I hope you'll give them a try, and I hope you've enjoyed the video. I would love to see you again next time. So thank you very much for joining me today, and hope to see you again. Have a great day.